What's going on, Imperials? It's Emperor Cubone here. The Kalos region has some of my all-time favorite shiny Pokémon that I've ever seen. But there are, of course, ones that don't measure up quite as well. But please do remember that Kalos was very limited on the number of new Pokémon, meaning there's quite a restricted pool. So odds are that one of your favorites might end up on the list. But here are the top six Kalos shiny Pokémon I would fix. Number six, Inkay. I love Inkay. It's easily in my top two teams from the Kalos region. And it's one of those Pokemon where I outright like the first stage better than its evolution. And its shiny is maybe okay for some, but for me, it looks like some old mustard and makes this thing seem much less adorable. And something that has always been a bit odd to me, personally, is that Inkay is a dark type in the first place. Many people have frequently shot down adding Dark-type to existing Pokémon whenever others casually suggest it because they say, Dark-type is evil-type in Japan, so that Pokémon is not nearly evil enough. But I ask you, is this evil? I can't see it that way, so I'm suggesting that we help to ally this Pokémon with its typing and make it physically darker as well. This looks better than the decomposing color from before, and makes it even more potent when using its hypnotic lights by blending its body into the shadows for more contrast. I guess Malamar could have that too if you wanted, but I think that shiny is a bit better just because of the additional highlights that it has with the extra colors. Plus, it's clearly evil enough already. So let's just focus on the delightfully charming Psychic Squid for the time being, shall we? Number 5, Carbink. Carbink, to me, is one of the most forgettable Pokémon from the newer generations. I get constantly surprised every time I run into one, almost like it's the first time I've ever seen it because I immediately forget about it, even though it has connections to one of the more prominent legendaries of the region. And really, its shiny is okay, but if you ask me, they changed the wrong thing. They missed a fairly obvious opportunity here to change the colors of the crystals. You could go with rubies or sapphires or emeralds. You know, like all the things that they used when they were coloring Sableye. There are just so many different kinds of gemstones, but I personally think going with red would probably be best. I feel the red sets it apart from the regular in a meaningful way, and could even have some lingering connections to Diancy. Maybe every shiny Pokémon is a more advanced member of its race and the next step to becoming a legend. That would make sense with what Team Rocket was trying to do at the Lake of Rage in powering up Gyarados but just turning it into a shiny. But that's not really likely since the only shinies that I have in Pokémon GO are hot garbage. Giving Carbink these crimson crystals might not make it any more memorable, but it would at least make it a bit cooler and help out those who might have an affinity for this fairy-type fractal. Number 4, Avalug. I've talked before about why I like Avalug way more than most people. It's a proud member of my Kalos Hall of Fame. But my word, look at this shiny. Is it the shiny? You can barely tell because the cracks are yellow, and that's about all the difference. Bergmite even changes more than that because the majority of the ice is slightly darker. So we could do that, or just make it super dark and go with some kind of logical iciness, but I'm not feeling that right now. My proposition is that we make Avalug into a purple color. It spices things up and makes it a noticeable difference that I actually think looks good unlike the original. It still looks convincing as an ice type, and also as an actual threat, even though many constantly underestimate this bulky glacier. Avalug might not be on everyone's radar, but if its shiny could actually be distinguished at a distance, it might help people stop and take notice of this powerful Kalos Pokémon that might have been unfairly forgotten. Number 3, Noivern. Noivern is amazing. It's a more unique kind of dragon than most, and it's another that people assume is a pseudo-legendary, but it might as well be one because of its raw power. 
If it weren't for a certain regal fossil, Noivern would definitely be the dragon type for me in Kalos. But this shiny... It's just bad. I see what they were going for. I really do. Switching the colors all around is an interesting idea, and could work on all sorts of different Pokémon, but that's not what they did. Instead of drawing the same tealish color from the ears and inner wings, the main body of Noivern becomes far more of a green. And I don't think it's just a shading issue with the eyes tricking me. I truly think they just picked different colors and thought no one would notice. So we'll try out their method, but with some slight improvements. For starters, I think purple would be a more appropriate base color, being closer to the original black. But then that means that everything else has to be shifted from the original form, but also can't be the same as the old shiny. So this is quite the game of musical chairs that we're playing. But I think we could move the red to the stomach and outer wings, and have the teal color go to the more pointed accents. That just leaves the black for the interior parts. And these are the actual colors that were used from the original, not the good enough approximations that were used on the official shiny version. Number two. Helioptile and Heliolisk. Helioptile and Heliolisk are interesting Pokémon. I've not yet used one, but I look forward to adding them to the team one day, even if they should be electric ground types. But a super common complaint about these Pokémon is that their shinies look like they've been terribly sunburned, and they're not wrong. I personally have always found it a bit weird that the head triangles remain defiantly yellow for some reason when the rest is a vibrant red. The truth is, literally anything would be better, even one of those barely change deals. But it's about that time for the obligatory blue shiny. They just look so good, I can't help myself. So I think Helioptile and Heliolisk should share in that privilege. Even if it would make it stand out a bit much in their natural desert habitat. Which might make it an easier target for predators, but maybe that's the reason why the Shinies are so rare in the first place. And let me just stop you now before you say anything about how Heliolisk can't be blue because it's based on the sun. I'll remind you that not only are blue stars a thing, but they frequently are able to burn hotter than our own star. So I think that having these electric lizards become a nice cool hue would better suit their demeanor, or at least make it less embarrassing for them to go out in public. Number 1. Hoopa It took me a while to realize Hoopa's shiny, but when I did, I knew that it had to be fixed. Hoopa is one of the more colorful mythicals to show up in recent generations, but its shiny form goes back to the old monochromatic days. There are maybe two colors here? I guess they were going for gold on purpose, but it makes Hoopa much more boring and less dynamic than before. Koopa would look better with almost anything, but for whatever reason, I think green would be fitting. Is it just because it kinda reminds me of a leprechaun? Maybe. But I think it's an acceptable replacement for the pink, and still represents its impish nature. Not, not actually an impish nature like in the games, but you know what I'm saying. It could probably even work with the ridiculously overpowered unbound form. Even as a giant, towering behemoth, this form is still subject to the lifeless golden shiny that has befallen the original. But having the green carry over to this form would make it less of a joke, and might even work better than the standard pink if you ask me. With all the portals this thing can create, we might just be able to reach a universe where this could actually be the case. And it even seems to alter the look of the gray because I didn't touch it, but it looks a little bluer, which suits it even better in my opinion, leaving these legends with something that they can actually be proud of. So, those are the top Kaloshani Pokémon I would fix. Which Kaloshanis would you change? Let me know down in the comments. Also be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today. And we'll see you around next time!